people over here with bodice blocks and I'm like, I got a crotch curve. This video is sponsored by Thrive Market. I've basically been living in these things since I made them, like wearing them way too much. Honestly, um, I don't really remember when I last washed them. I'm gonna go change. Are we all sorts of excited today? Okay, anyway. Oh, now I'm very washed out. <laughs> Adjust. Basically, they're incredibly comfortable. The knit is delightfully soft. There's lots of loose fabric. They're easy to just pull on really fast. I want more so I can stop wearing these five days in a row without washing them. But I'm not really tied to the specific um, saggy crotch, only one cut in the fabric design of these, mainly because it does use a lot of extra fabric that's just like dangling between your legs there. I think if you want a super easy way to make a little jumpsuit overalls kind of thing, it's a great option. But I've done that, I can do something else now. So I'm thinking just some good old stretch material knit overalls. How hard can it be? I threw a bunch of fabric in the wash last night so that I would be prepped for upcoming projects, but it was kind of too late at night and I had to go to bed. So I asked Matt to take them all out of the dryer and just lay them out flat so they didn't get super wrinkly. Kind of meaning just like in one stack. Look at the beautiful artwork he created instead. Such a good job. Many thanks. Let me fold all of this now. Ah. God, I love me some soft knit. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, full disclosure. I don't know why it has to be a disclosure. It's just a random fact. This probably isn't the best time to be doing this, or it is. I just once again have like limited time until family is visiting. So if I don't finish making this before then, I have to pause in the middle of a project. That keeps happening, but it's like, we're finishing up summer where all that stuff happens and then we move back into fall where nothing happens. I'm so excited. <laughs> but I couldn't just like sit around for two days and I really want more overalls. So we're going for it. I kind of want to make two. I might make three. We'll see how things go. Remember the snake fabric? I've only mentioned it in one video, but there's snake fabric. I got this from Distashify. So freaking cute. And it's not enough to make something out of, but this red fabric goes with the red snakes really perfectly. So I might do one of those like half of the overalls is one type of fabric and half is the other. I don't know, but that seems like fun. And you know I like fun, in my clothing at least, not in my everyday activities. Then I have this striped stuff, which is incredibly delightfully soft. I've been wanting to use it for so long. I think it's probably just enough as it is to make a pair of overalls, especially if I do them under the knee instead of like long pants. <laughs> I wouldn't say floor length, but like you don't describe pants as floor length, just pants as opposed to capris. You know what I mean. However, if there's not quite enough of this fabric, I do have this matching solid fabric as well. That's also so soft. Oh my God, ah, softness. I'm okay. So I could always like make the pockets out of this, make the straps out of this. And then because I thought it might be easiest the first time since this is a new pattern I'm trying to figure out, it might just be easiest to make one out of all one fabric that I definitely have enough of. So that is why I pulled and washed this fabric. It is, wanna guess, incredibly soft. Yay! But I thought maybe you should just start by making just a solid colored pair. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, rich wine, burgundy, maroon, whatever you want to call it color. While I sip coffee and psych myself up for this, let's chat about the sponsor of today's video. This video is sponsored by Thrive Market, an online market that offers its members access to organic, high quality groceries at affordable prices, like... My favorite chip flavors, lemon sweet thins, and even some pink lemonade. You never outgrow pink lemonade. At Thrive, you can shop for the brands that you love, 
browse according to your specific diet, or take the opportunity to try something new, all from the comfort of your own home. I love doing things from the comfort of my own home. And it's not just healthy and delicious snacks that you can get. They also have pantry staples, cleaning supplies, baby food, vitamins. I got myself a new brand of coffee to try in the morning, which is like half the price of the stuff I get in the store. And of course I had to get something for the puppy. Munch. He approves. With free shipping on all orders over $49 and price matching if you are able to find a lower price anywhere else, ordering from Thrive honestly just makes more sense than getting groceries delivered from the store. Click the link in my description or go to thrivemarket.com slash the stitchery to get 30% off your first order and a free gift worth up to $60 when you join Thrive Market today. Thank you to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video and let's go make some overalls. Logically in my head, these overalls would consist of four pieces because I don't want any waistline cut. So it has to go all the way from over the bust to the floor or to the hem of the pants. I'm wondering if I could even <sighs> cut it out in such a way where the straps are literally attached. I don't know. Yes, it seems like I could. But other than that, I would just need pockets because of course. That's a given. Oh, let's see if I've gotten any better at remembering that knit fabric stretches. <laughs> I'm usually bad at that. Let's check what the stretch is. If I take six inches of fabric and fully stretch it, I get to 11 inches of fabric. Someone do that math problem real fast. What is the percentage of stretch then? I'm gonna do the simple version of that, which is that it almost doubles in length, which means you could almost half a measurement, especially if it's getting a lot of pressure put on it, like the straps. So if I said my straps are normally from the middle of my shoulder down to where I would want like the actual bodice to start eight inches, I should probably make them actually five inches, little more than half. I will probably go ahead and make them six inches for seam allowance and um, cautiousness. <laughs> Straps are an easy thing to make shorter. Am I making these long pants? Floor length? 60 inches. I'm a solid five footer to my shoulder. So if I'm actually 60 inches total, what I cut out does not really need to be 60 inches total because the weight of the fabric pulling down on itself is going to extend it. I think most of that gravitational consideration I can take out of the straps themselves, but it does come into play with where the crotch seam is because if that is too low because you didn't calculate in the gravitational pull, then you're just gonna end up with saggy crotch. So you almost wanna make that a little higher than you normally would, just to be careful. Anyway, just things that I muse upon. People ask, how do you, uh, how do you come up with your own patterns? It is through very slow musings of this kind, but you should definitely swoop it out anyway. I don't even think it's that important. <laughs> My philosophy on like all measurements. I don't even think it's that important. I need a full 60 inches. This is probably too much. Well, the question here is, do you actually even have enough? You can't just start cutting things out willy nilly. Where are my crotch things? While making all of my knit shorts, I made like paper pieces of my front and back crotch curve based on my wire thing. Still love the wire thing, but these just make it even faster. I can just lay that down on the fabric and do the rest of my measurements as normal, but then be like, Whoosh, there's my curve. Works great. Mm. I don't know. All right, we're gonna go for it. At some point you just have to be like, okay, yeah, this will probably be fine. And you know what? It probably will because you're using stretch material. Also, if you're trying to pattern something out and it's just kind of confusing to you, like you're having trouble getting started, just go ahead and start with the least confusing thing. I'm currently pinning out the legs because I know what the legs should look like. And I'm leaving the bodice. And maybe once I have the leg on here, the bodice will make more sense to me. We can always hope. Are you calculating in for gravitational pull? No, you're not. After that whole discussion, 
I'm just ignoring it. Great. Yeah, no, that's actually correct. We're going with this. Why does it feel like there's a giant wrinkle under here? Oh, because it's because there's a giant wrinkle under there. Oh, did you want to add seam allowance to this? <laughs> kind of forgot to think about that. It'll be fine. Okay, there we go. Sure, okay, next. Okay, nope, not even a little. Uh oh, Ooh, still no. <sighs> okay, we might have problems. All right, y'all, I am gonna have to get these two front pieces out of here so precariously that I think I just need to go lay this out on the floor where I can see the full thing and I'm gonna have to cut each one separately. I did not plan as well as I thought I did. Yay! I'll be back. Okay, that was every bit as tricky as I expected it to be, but I just scraped by and got all four pieces cut out. There's lots of fabric left over, it's just because you need that entire 60 inch length. Uh, it's real hard to get that, but I got it. I also went ahead and cut out two pockets. I'm just gonna do the simple like sewn onto the front kind of pockets, patch pockets. There's a name for that. Um, and then I will come back and cut out binding for everything later. I prefer to sew everything together and then get like an exact measurement of the length of binding that I need. And that just makes it easier to me. So. We're ready to sew. Huzzah. I bought a spool of this Mettler Seraflex thread the other day after seeing it recommended uh, somewhere, probably Instagram, I can't remember. It's supposed to be good for sewing on stretch fabrics or like specifically made for that, though it is not stretchy in itself. So I'm not really sure why it's good for stretch fabrics. Gonna give it a try on this first pair of overalls cause I don't think I have thread in this color anyway. And actually it does seem really nice right from the start. Like super smooth, I guess. That may have nothing to do with the thread, but I'm at least sure it's not making anything worse. After getting the pockets attached, I just had to sew up those side seams, inseams, front and back seams, shoulder seams, all your basic seams. Super easy construction, we love it. Let's go test. They're super comfy, but here's immediately the example of what I said. The weight of it means the straps need to be like that short. And that puts my crotch seam where it's supposed to actually be. Okay, and then I'm good with the size right here. It's just kind of the amount of bagginess that I want, but I forgot to taper it in around the top. So I've got a lot of bagginess here that I don't need. So just kind of a triangle can come out there. Then I can throw some binding around the neckline and the armholes, hem the legs, we'll be golden. Alrighty y'all, one down. I love it so much. It's so comfy. I do need to keep in mind that binding really stabilizes things and changes that stretch. So it's almost too small now. Like I cut these even further down than I had originally cut them and they're still pretty up in my armpits. And then my crotch seam is like right up there in the crotch. I'm fine with that because stretch material, the longer you wear it and the more you wash it, kind of stretches out. So I think this is actually good and will last longer and not be a saggy as fast. That's what I'm telling myself. We're going with that. Ah, I love it though. I think the solid color one for the first was a really good choice. So I'm gonna move on to round number two. Actually first, I should clean my sewing machine. Y'all, when I said um, somebody tell me in six months to clean my sewing machine, I did not think that some of you would legit not only do that, but like set an alarm for me. You guys are the best. Several of you have commented or sent me messages to say, hey, it's been six months. You should clean your sewing machine. Thank you for reminding me. I 100% 
would not have remembered. So I'm going to pause before I move on to the second overalls and queen my sewing machine. Okay, machine cleaned, first pair of overalls done. I'm gonna do this one next. And since I don't have as much fabric here, and also just cause I like some variety, I think I'm gonna do this pair as like capris under the knee, but still with just wide legs. And I wanna do something different with the neckline, mainly because I hate sewing V-neck binding. So I might try to do just an actual scoop neckline on each side. Yeah, let's try it. The fitting around measurements were good, so I think I should use that. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can just not trace this exactly because I'm doing it slightly different, but if I can lay this out and throw some pins around it and then adjust it as needed, it should be super fast and easy. Theoretically. Always theoretically. I know I haven't done the final product or anything for these, but I don't care, I'm wearing them. They're so comfy. <laughs> you can see more of them in a little bit. Round two. Hi, come here. Oh no, did you almost die? <laughs> Do we have the food in our jeans? Burpees. I'm honestly not sure if this thread made any difference. I think it has more to do with wearing the garment, you know? Like because it has some give to it, although I wouldn't call it stretchy at all, possibly it'll help seams not pop when pressure is put on them. We shall see, but for now, since this fabric has black in it anyway, I'm gonna use it again. Okay, I just need some binding. Right now it's really loose up top, but I'm trusting because of what happened with the first one that once I put some binding on here, it's gonna feel stable. So let's do that. And I ended up running out of the Seraflex thread right before finishing this pair of overalls. Hence the reason there's a tiny bobbin of it up there. So we shall see if the hems where I had to use regular old thread feel different from the rest. Probably not noticeably would be my guess. Y'all, me and binding, it is always too small or too big. Someday I will get binding right. I don't care enough to spend a lot of time focusing on it. <laughs> I'm usually fine if it's a little too loose or a little too tight. I'm like, whatever, that garment is still 100% wearable to me. But it would be lovely someday to get it just right. And the 80% rule doesn't always work for me, so. About to run out of this thread. Cool. Next. Okay, these were both pretty fast to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and do round three. I did a little not so sneaky fixing of my binding in the front by just hand stitching some darts into it. <laughs> this is what I would rather do then uh, seam rip and re-sew it on. I'm just not picky about stuff like this. I will wear this a ton. It doesn't matter that there's weird little stitches in my binding. Anyway, we're going for the crazy fabric here. And like, it's snakes, it's bright red. We might as well go all the way into the land of jesters. <laughs> Slightly clownish closing. Closing? Clothing. It's a vibe. It's a vibe that I'm enjoying. I think I'm gonna do this under the knee again, but I might do um, like an elastic cuff 
under the knee. I don't know that I can even get two sides out of this fabric. This is not much at all. Cause I basically need 45 inches. Kind of more than that, because if I wanna do a cuff, I need to have enough to turn up underneath. Okay, so I have 53. Mm, I don't know, I think it'll actually work. Cause you do one this way and then one this way. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> We're gonna try it. Oh, you did not put seam allowance there, but you did put seam allowance here. Either always put seam allowance or don't put seam allowance, but don't do a halfway thing. Was this with seam allowance or without seam allowance? I've lost track. That was without the seam allowance, I think. All right, we're going with that. Ooh, that's got a nice thick cut to it. Question everything. Nope, still right. Just like you were a minute ago. Time for the red. Cooperate. I will say if you're interested in making some of these yourself, having now, you know, gotten to my third pair, you'll notice I'm still connecting the straps. It might make it harder or trickier to fit what you need on the amount of fabric you have because it does make the piece you're cutting out just a little bit longer, but it makes it so much easier in the sewing together that like, worth it. What if I put pockets like literally on the side seam? So then it's like half over the same color. Ooh, do I have enough snake left? I could do one in snake and one in red. Yeah, I've got enough snake left. Yeah, I'm gonna do pockets on the actual sides right here. So they'll have to be sewn on after the pieces are sewn together. Ow, my wrist, why? Don't do that. Okay, so I just need the binding, which I will again do after I sew it together. Ooh, y'all. So I just went to grab some red thread cause I thought why not sew the whole thing in red. Uh, turns out I have Coates and Clark Evo Flex thread in red. Why? No idea. I, I do not remember buying this and I do not know why I would have. I'm pretty sure this is just their brand of the same thing. Evo Flex, the last one was Sarah Flex. We're all very creative on the names. Again, the thread itself, Oh, I can feel a little bit of stretch to it actually. It's not like stretchy thread the same way that like there's elastic thread that you use for... <sighs> I lost the word. Uh, I fully lost the word. I'm just gonna put it on the screen cause I'll remember it by the time I'm editing. It's not the elastic thread that you use for that, but you can tell that there is some give to it. Anyway, so I guess I'm gonna sew this one with this thread. And this is the uh, trying out stretch material threads video that I didn't expect it to be. This red knit is actually kind of see-through, but I don't really care. Oh. Okay, that is significantly different than the black one that I just used. Yeah, my seams over here, they feel like they have a little bit of give, but like I would not call that stretch at all, give. Maybe you still wouldn't call that full on stretch, but I would call that like triple the amount of give that this one had. Like that's pretty stretchy. Cool. It does kind of leave the seams looking more ripply, but that could also just be the type of knit that I'm using right now. It is a ripply knit, ripply knit, ripply knit. That's a hard thing to say. For the days that remain, this is the promise I make. Oh, all right, snapped the thread. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> These are gonna be so fun. <laughs> yes. Fashion. Okay, so somehow my side seams have crept out again like the first one was doing. So I'm gonna lightly take that up. But then other than that, it's just slapping the pockets on the sides. Um, 
binding, always more binding. Let's see if it goes better this time. And then figuring out the cuff. And I'm just gonna do all that real fast, either tonight or at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Love some early morning sewing. So let's take a look at the final three products. Oh y'all, <laughs> it's so comfy. I am real pleased with this one. I'm so glad I decided to make it. I've been wearing it all today as well and it's covered in dog fur already. It's just something about the fabric and the swooshy long legs and I actually really like how it's like tighter up here now. I don't know, I adore it. Best of the three for sure. These two got a little bit funkier. I think my construction on the striped one isn't very good, but it is a much lighter version of the whole thing. So like, it'll be great to wear all summer long. And it's also that really soft fabric. This one, so freaking cute. I love it. But the fabric is not quite as pleasant. This one is a little bit of a rougher feel. And then I kind of forgot until I went to make it how thin this knit is, which I think led to a lot of the construction problems, just connecting a thicker knit with a thinner one. And then the other construction problems, I think are kind of due to the thread. The thread, that is another reason I think this one is so good. Like, look at this. I can fully stretch my seams, y'all. And yes, I did them zigzag stitch, but even a zigzag stitch with normal thread Usually I'm like, oh, it's got a little give, but I can't really like stretch it. I still need to be careful. This one is so easy to put on because it's just, it's like I sewed it with a serger. So that was with the Seraflex thread. And I don't know, I, I kind of might need to, to get some more of that and keep playing around with it because it was just, it was super easy to sew with. And then yeah, this all just like feels really nice. <laughs> As opposed to the other one, Elo Flex, was that what it was? I've already forgotten. I actually, after I stopped recording when I was putting on the pockets, I switched to a regular thread. I think because that one is significantly more stretchy, it can be really helpful on certain fabrics for certain seams. I don't think you should just sew an entire project with it, which is kind of a <laughs> for me because switching thread halfway through the same garment is like, why? Why you make me do that? I don't wanna do that. So yeah, the, the Elo Flex or whatever it was, I think if you sew a lot on knit could be worth playing around with and just seeing like, does it work for certain things? But the Sarah Flex, I really liked in general. It was easy to sew the entire project with it. And I'm just like really pleased by these results. Anyway, I do love the design as well. It's funny, I used to not wear stuff like this because I was like, oh no, it's too loose around here. It doesn't smush my belly flat. And now I specifically am like, oh, it doesn't smush my belly flat. <laughs> How delightful. <laughs> It's funny how fast that changes. It's so lovely to wear clothing that does not constrict you. Where you got room for your tum-tum to just exist. Speaking of tum-tums, I really want to make a chocolate cake. I haven't watched The Great British Bake Off for a while because I just haven't really had time to watch much of anything. And yesterday I started watching it again and immediately I want to bake. Ooh, I could use my new coffee. I always put coffee in chocolate cake. I've tested it, coffee against water the coffee tastes so much richer. And speaking of my new coffee, 
Don't forget to click on the link in my description to join Thrive Market today. You'll get 30% off your first order and a free gift worth up to $60. I'm gonna go make cake. Woo! Yeah. Tripped over my own pant legs. Oh no. <laughs> my battery. What? <sighs> That's not right. You're bored. But you were having so much fun screaming at the internet. Hmm, we've got another nipple. That's the chair bloopy bloopy. You've got to. Ow! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that hurt.